he said somewhere along the line, like a work of art ought to hit you, like being hit in the back of the neck with a baseball bat. He doesn't want the experience to be pleasant and perfumey. It's supposed to be disturbing at first. Not cheap, shocking disturbing, but just what the hell is going on here? He's a master of filling space, whether it's with sound or light or color. And the works, although in very, very different technologies and media, speak to each other. Yes, we realize that was bad. He's really inquisitive. Will this work? Will that work? Because it's interesting. What I love about Bruce's work is he basically works with what's there, weaving forms together, trying to find places between the cracks of the art forms, and I think it continues to this day. One of the things that he shies away from is the artist as a kind of big personality. He would rather let the work speak for itself. When he was at Davis, they gave graduate students studios. And the only directive from the faculty that you go into this room, what do you do? Well, you do whatever you do. He took it logically, which Bruce does. Whatever I do in this room is art, because I'm an artist. So he started doing those early black and white videos where he just puts himself in different positions. He's making sculpture with the least amount of material that he can make a sculpture with, which is saying, well, what I've got is my own body. I've got me. This is what I've got to work with. I met Bruce in the summer of 1968. He was doing a piece at the Whitney with his first wife and Bruce and me. Each of us were in a corner of the room. Basically, for an hour, we fell back against the wall and then came back up. I was very impressed that you could make a piece just with one action. What made it exciting was that there was a sense of playfulness. You know, the playfulness and that sense of beginner's mind in art is what makes the magic happen. You know, not knowing everything. Somewhere about in the early 70s, Bruce relocated from Los Angeles to New Mexico. He likes to be at a distance. He's a loner in the studio, and he goes into the studio and sits and thinks, drinks a lot of coffee. Bruce operates with artist block. Artist block is to him like gesso on a canvas is to a painter. It's the first thing you do. But there has to be a certain amount of faith that something will come. Probably the single most well-known work of Bruce is the spiral neon that says, the true artist helps the world by revealing mystic truths. I think he's testing that idea. There's that old saying, well, how do I know what I think until I hear myself say it? Bruce is one of those people of, how do I know that this philosophical idea has any traction to it until I see it manifested out there? I think Bruce is somehow obsessed with language. It's the subject of the work, but it's also kind of the content. And the work seems to concertina between sense and nonsense. You think you understand something, you think you read something, and then it turns into something else, which is kind of funny, but also it's violent. Bruce is interested in a kind of intellectual distance on something that's very visceral the people poking each other in the eye, and there's the other one which I find hilarious, is the pornography. But it's in these blinking figures in neon, and he does it in a way that completely drains it and makes it, in a word, slapstick. He's one of the funniest artists there is. Humorous in the sense that the bottom line is that the world is absurd. He's not concerned about beauty. I mean, they're terribly ugly to your Aunt Nellie. Your grandmother Edna would think, well, this is not art. 
And part of it is, in order to want something to make beautiful, you have to have an idea of what is beautiful, and that hamstrings you right from the get-go. Beat and repeat was sitting on a fence, and Pete fell off his left repeat. Keaton and Repeat were sitting on a fence. Pete fell off. Who was left? Repeat. Work, 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 work. Raw Materials was the name of the project that Bruce Nauman made for Tate Modern's Turbine Hall. What was kind of genius about Bruce is that he filled the Turbine Hall with corridors of sound. So you actually walked from silence to sound to silence to sound. The piece played both with the spatial aspect of the building, but also a kind of register of emotions for the visitor. I know that he always was very interested in loving music very much. And, um, and I do find his work very musical. His structures are very musical. It's a compositional, rhythmic form. You feel uh, the impulse of music even if you're not hearing it. What I think about Bruce is that he's a, a person that has total integrity. This is an artist's work, this is their body of work, and they manifest mediums based on their ideas. There are certain artists that come along and they give subsequent artists permission. You can do anything you want. 